I am Coach Emmy with Blissfully Healthy Women's Wellness Center, certified eating psychology coach and motivational speaker. And today I really wanted to share some information with you about um, a common thing I hear, especially during this time of the year when there's a lot of treats around and sugar and we just got done with Halloween here um, and we're heading into Thanksgiving and then Christmas and then the New Year's and then February 14th and there's just candy and treats and food everywhere this time of the year. Oh, and then we've got Easter, right? <laughs> After that. So I wanted to give you some information about this common thing I hear from a lot of women who first come in to when they first get started with a coaching and that is I feel like I'm a food addict. I feel like I am addicted to sugar and once I have a little bit I can't stop. And so I really want to help um, just give some empowerment around that. And when we have that mindset, um, you know, it can be, it can be a place where we feel powerless around it. And a way to try to get back in control might be to say, I'm not going to have any at all. So it's very black and white thinking or all and or nothing thinking where I'm not going to have any because if I have a little bit, then I'm going to go way off track and eat anything and anything that's not nailed down and doesn't fight back. And I get it. That totally used to be me. Once I had a little bit of something sweet, it would just completely backslide and go into an emotional eating binge that could last for days, could last for weeks, and I struggled to get myself out of that. And so I myself went down that road of thinking I was a food addict, specifically a sugar addict. And I went through all sorts of diets. I went through elimination. I got off sugar completely and um, was able to do that for about, I would say, a couple of weeks. And then each and every time there would be this huge backlash of eating sugar and not being able to stop. And I wanna share a little bit with you about if that's a pattern you see yourself in, why that's happening, and um, just to give you some hope of that freedom from that is possible. So when I was exploring that route, um, I went to things like Food Addicts Anonymous, um, Overeaters Anonymous, uh, lots of different types of counseling even, and um, lots of different programs and weight loss programs. And I just never really had that breakthrough I was looking for. And the reason is, speaking from personal experience, but this is also the experience I've had over 12 years now of being free from binge eating and really had been in a place of recovery around emotional eating, specifically around sweets. Um, this is coming from also helping thousands of clients over the last 12 years also. Um, so this route works. So that's, I hope that you can really hear that, that there's hope for you. You're not alone in that. So many women share the same struggles and it is not impossible for you so there's three reasons why emotional eating happens number one is going to be because of habit so when you see food eat food so if the sugar can't the sugar is out it's going to be more of a trigger to rem to see it oh I should eat it and you're going to have thoughts um, and a, a inner war might start of I should eat it no I shouldn't maybe I can just have one just this time no I shouldn't have any because then if I have a little bit I'm just gonna completely go crazy on sugar so there starts this inner battle and then a restriction mindset can set in of not having any um, and feeling like I don't trust myself. That's something I hear a lot from clients. I don't trust myself around binge foods or sugar foods. Um, and so I just need to stay on track and just stay on this route. And so as restriction and control can come in. So the first um, reason why emotional eating happens is, is because it's very habitual. If you think about when you go home at night and you think, okay, the day's over and I really want to uh, decompress and it can even start to become very um, subconscious where you just find yourself sitting down and the craving takes over and you grab some food and you sit down in front of the TV and eat. So that can be habitual environmental type of a trigger. 
Now, the second reason that emotional eating can happen is because of physiology. So this can literally be because of all the um, emotional eating restriction, emotional eating restriction, and diet thoughts and obsession and stress in life. This can actually cause neurotransmitter deficiencies and amino acid deficiencies, which creates these unsatiable cravings that can make it really difficult to not eat those foods. Um, physiology can also be if you've gone too long without eating and you've got low blood sugar levels. It can also be if you've eaten a lot of sugar and then you have a blood sugar crash, well now I need more sugar and carby foods to get my blood sugar back up. Um, it could be adrenal stress. It could be not sleeping enough and then your hormones are going to be out of whack and you're going to crave to eat more. So we've got a real physiological component piece that your body's trying to protect you and your body's trying to help you survive. It is not, it is not your enemy. It is your friend and it's trying to help you survive. So we want to figure out what are the physiological components for you. And that's something I love working on with clients in private coaching. Now the third one, the third one, which really drives most of the emotional eating, especially if you've tried countless diets under the sun and you've been struggling with the emotional eating for decades, um, this might be that third one. And the third one is gonna be the emotional component or emotional attachments to food. And that's my favorite piece to work on with clients. So that could be where maybe at some time in your life you went through a difficult time, maybe that's childhood, maybe that's adolescence, maybe that's an adult adulthood um, and going through a big loss, going through a big hurt, um, a, a transition, a move, like and, uh, lots of different stressors. And then we can form attachments, things like I get my nurturing, my love, my security from eating sweets. And this is very subconscious. And so what we want to do is we really want to figure out what it is that the need you're trying to fulfill by doing that behavior. And once we know why we're doing what we're doing, we can start to heal, but we need to look at that. So what is this whole sugar addict thing? Well, the worst thing we can really do if emotional eating is really um, a, the driving factor for the compulsion around sugar, one of the worst things we can do is actually go on a sugar cleanse or to go on uh, a restrictive way of eating. Because the way that we actually heal emotional eating is to not restrict. We really wanna do the emotional work and the mindset work, and then um, take one step at a time approach as we change the way we, we see food, and then we change what we actually want. So I love it when I have clients say, you know, I went out to eat and I had some uh, raspberry cheesecake and I had a few bites and then I was done. I didn't want anymore. It wasn't about uh, trying to control it or I shouldn't have anymore. Literally it was I don't want anymore. And that's what I see over and over for clients. Um, and so you're I am talking from a place of really getting it personally where I used to eat sugar with a spoon out of a bag when I couldn't find something sweet to eat. Or I would just find anything I could put some sugar and maybe some butter together on it, maybe a little cinnamon and make my own sweet treat. Um, so I would eat um, large bags of M&Ms and we're not talking about the share size, we're talking about the party size and just eating them and eating them or large bags of chocolate chips, you know, the, the bags you make to bake cookies, I would just be sitting there eating that or I could eat a half a loaf of bread in one day. Um, so I really get that. And now I'm on that other side where I can have a candy bowl in front of me and not want it. I can have um, previously binge foods like donuts and just have a bite of it and not want any more. So I want you to have that same transformation. If this is really speaking to you, I want you to know that there is hope for you and feeling like you're a sugar addict and a food addict. Notice the cycle you might go through. Is that really serving you? Is it really serving you to tell yourself that you can't have any? And are you finding that if you do that, you can be good and stay on track for a certain amount of time, but then once life gets stressful, you find yourself backsliding and binging on that 
food. And you might even think things like, well, screw it. I already had one piece of uh, uh, chocolate, so I might as well just eat anything and everything until I get back, back on track on Monday. I might as well just get it in right now because I'm never going to have it again when I go back to a sugar-free way of eating. That is actually leading to more emotional eating. And so in my Living Blissfully Healthy process, I walk clients through being able to find a place of freedom so you can have your wants change. I had one client come in when she first started and said, I want my wants to change. And I thought, that is brilliant. That's exactly what we do. Because it's not realistic that you're never, ever going to have a piece of chocolate again or a little bit of wine unless you, we need to really look at that level because you're an alcoholic. Or um, it's not like you're never going to have, you know, a piece of bread again. Or, you know, um, uh, what is the chocolate that comes out in, in um, Christmas? Peppermint bark? It's not like you're never going to have that again. Like once we say we can't have it, now I want it even more. Guess what the most addicting foods are? I'm going to take a moment to just guess. If anybody's here live, Comment below on what do you think the most addictive foods are. I'm going to wait for just a moment. Take a sip of my coffee. The most addicting foods. Are you ready for this? Everyone you restrict. Everyone that you say, I can't have it, I shouldn't have it, I will lose control if I have it you will definitely find yourself having more of an addictive type of relationship with that food. So this is about emotional freedom. And once I let go of the mindset of I'm a food addict, I'm a sugar addict, and let go of that piece of my identity, there was a lot of freedom that started with it. So I really want to invite you, if you have gone down that road of calling yourself a food addict or a sugar addict and it's not working for you, are you identifying with that? Are you making that part of your identity? Part of healing emotional eating is actually looking at your core and doing this massive internal work one step at a time. And I give you the tools to do that. I give you the structure and the tools of how to make that process and to do it so that it's lasting. It's not about an all or nothing thing. It's actually about healing internally and changing your identity. You might be identifying yourself as I am, you know, a food addict or a sugar addict or I am an emotional eater. I want to invite you to change that language because anything that comes after I am is an identity statement. So instead it could be, you know, I have struggles around sugar or I am working towards had no longer having struggles around sugar, or I am working towards letting go of emotional eating behavior. You know, I want to encourage you that that's really the work we need to do. So if this sounds like something that's interesting to you, I really want to invite you to consider being a part of the Living Blissfully Healthy Holiday Support Group where you can have access to all this type of coaching just like this and the workbook that I've created, all the videos that are part of the process, things like dealing with amino acid deficiencies and shutting off cravings before they even start. And how do we do that? So you don't actually have to struggle through, you know, dealing with those cravings. You don't have to white knuckle it. I want those cravings to be gone. And there's ways that we can do that very quickly. How about how do I release weight as a side effect of healing emotional eating without food journaling? That's something that we cover in one of the videos of part of the Living Blissfully Healthy program. We also talk about mindset tools and when you feel like you just want to emotionally eat because it's going to happen, what do you do? And having an SOS tool that you can use at a drop of a dime to help you relieve from that urge as well as find freedom in that moment and clarity around why that, that craving is happening in the first place. So all of this, including some gentle nutritional guidance that will help you make some real lasting shifts around emotional eating. I'm just thrilled to offer this. And I really think this is one of the best times to jump into support around healing emotional eating because we are not taking away your food. Because part of what a lot of times can 
be thought of with the mindset is I'm going to start this new diet. <gasps> my food's going to go away. Oh my gosh, I can't have my food. And I get it. And that's not what we're going to do here. We start in a completely different way which will actually help you have that lasting change. So don't be scared. I'm going to give you all the tools so you won't even miss the food. It is possible. You can do it. You can absolutely do this. We just need to get you the right support. And being a part of a community of other women who are walking through this together, it's massively powerful. One of the reasons why emotional eating happens on that emotional level, that third reason why, is because we have a lack of connection in life and having connection and being a part of a community of women who really get you and who understand and who are walking through this together and you'll have me every single day I post in this group every single day some type of a support and engaged in there you've got lots of Monday mindset videos just like this as well as the whole living blissfully healthy process and all of that is just $97 a month that's it. That is it. Um, a session with me is, is $150 for a one-hour session, and you're going to get the whole process for just $97 a month, and it's just for three months. So if this sounds like it's something you would like to explore, I'm going to put a link here in the comments once I get off of this Facebook Live, and I'd love to have you join us. We're gonna be having a um, mindful eating Thanksgiving workshop here coming up real soon. So as soon as you jump in, you'll get the 30 days of daily boosts, you'll get all of this great support, but you're gonna have all the tools and understanding of why the behavior happens so that coming into the new year, you can just hit the ground running with a whole new mindset and really achieve the happiest, healthiest version of you in 2020 so this really is the best time if you're feeling like screw it you know I'm not gonna worry about the weight loss I'm just gonna enjoy the holidays and then coming the new year maybe taking a look at that that is actually a very beneficial mindset for this program because you're giving yourself permission to actually look at the emotional piece of this so that the weight loss can happen and so I hope that you'll jump into this. I hope to see you in the community. And I will post that link here. And all you need to do is click. And you can literally just go ahead and get started right away today. And I will hopefully see you in that community. And if not, I hope that this video was helpful for you. All right. Well, until we connect again, you are invited to stop dieting and start living. Because you are worth it. And I'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye-bye.